Good evening, everybody. This is Cholera with the final game, and I'm with uh, Hazel, of course, the final game of Bisu vs. Stork, uh, played in China about uh, a week and a half ago, and uh, this is really exciting. Um, of course, these players uh, went there for two days, and they're going to get a lot of money for it. Uh, both of them are going to get, I think, over $5,000 US dollars. Winner gets about $10,000. And basically, they had a chance to... Um, uh, well, basically, beat four uh, Chinese pro gamers or top Chinese gamers, I guess. Uh, and, and now they're obviously it's Koreans facing each other here in the final game, and uh, a good-sized crowd there. This is going to be on Python, actually, another map from about a year and a half ago, and uh, you know it's a great map. I mean, pretty much uh, everyone likes it. That's why it's played so much, and uh, this should be interesting. Oh my God, there's a big STL in the middle of the map. <laughs> that is bizarre. Okay, I'm going to get the colors. <laughs> I actually, I actually don't know. Um, yeah, Stork is the uh, a teal Protoss at the top, and uh, Bisu is the white Protoss at the bottom here. So uh, a little bit of cross positions. It might lend to a longer game here. Um, this has been a really exciting series, especially last game, man. That was an awesome game. I really love these old school maps, I just have to say. I haven't seen Python actually played in a real match in the Pro League series at all. And it's just a map that we all know and love. Um, a lot of these older maps just lend to a lot of creativity, I think. I think Monty Hall last game was just so great because these players really haven't been practicing on them so much so that they are, right. they're forced to use somewhat creative builds, do some proxy gating. It's really exciting, I think. Um, it's a lot better than just watching the same old, I don't know, name a map, <laughs> Neo Requiem or whatever, over and over, or seeing Xin Chupeng Ryong with the proxy gateways there, which are just so predictable now. I think both players are going for just a scout after a gateway. Um, they're not really expecting anything too cheesy, I think, otherwise they would have send out a scout even earlier, but Python is a pretty balanced map, I think. It is also a very tried and true map, and both players will be scouting in the wrong direction. One is scouting clockwise and the other counterclockwise, and they will once again have a nice little probe high five, yay! <laughs> but <laughs> both players will not discover each other. They might go for safer builds just because of that, but we'll see. Actually, Stork looks like he's going to be going for a uh, two gate here, so um, two gate in the dark certainly not a. I mean, it's not a completely unsafe opening, but uh, you know, we'll see if he goes. It really commits to the two gate, or he puts down his gas. Most likely, he'll put down his gas. I've never seen really an all-in build from Stork, anything like, like three gate before. Um, I think that just probably wouldn't work on this map either. But uh, it is going to allow him more zealots to begin with, and uh, slightly, uh, you know, slightly stronger army in the beginning. Um, although, of course. Uh, uh, looks like uh, well, Bisu is actually not going to get in. That is going to bother Bisu. Bisu loves getting his information. And, uh, you know, as Sun Tzu says, uh, knowing yourself and, and knowing your enemy. If you know yourself and you know your enemy, then you can't lose. Um, but it looks like Bisu actually gets in here, and he's going to see the two gate, and uh, Stork is going to lose that element of surprise. And actually, Stork is um, committing to building a lot of zealots here. He still hasn't put down his gas yet. Uh, it looks like Bisu is, uh, is just getting his second gateway now, and and he's going to put down his core, I believe, right now. Um, so Stork, it, it, you know, it's going to need to do a little bit of damage here. Um, actually, no, no, no core from Bisu. So Bisu knows he needs extra zealots, and uh, you know, he's I think will be okay against this though, and uh, he might take a little bit of an advantage because of this. I've actually found that in a lot of Protoss and Protoss games, at least when I play, the player with the two gate, in amateur levels at least, the player with the two gate gains a huge advantage in the beginning, but this might not be the case because, simply because Bisu has scouted it, he has responded correctly with another gate and pumping more zealots because he really needs them against this zealot, this two gate zealot pump from Stork. And the cross positions actually may help him in this. A Stork's zealots will be slower, Bisu will be able to produce many more zealots, at least in time for these three zealots from Stork. They're just trying to do a little dance up this ramp. We're going to see an engagement right now, but I'm not sure how they're microing. Bisu is microing. Both players are pulling their zealots properly. Look at that dancing dance of the zealots. You know, Cholera, you say that Dragoons dance, but zealots actually do have quite an aesthetic dance as well. No, they're not dancing. They're just, they're walking backwards to hold, they're like basically putting tourniquets on their legs and arms, okay? They're not dancing. They're like, oh crap, I've lost like some of my fingers. Let me walk backwards so I don't die. <laughs> no dancing evolved. This is like men falling back because 
they have broken limbs and they need to, you know, let the other guy take the hits from giant blades going through their bodies. Anyway, I think it's completely manly. There's no dancing there. <laughs> but, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, anyway, let's continue with the commentating. Looks like um, Stork, uh, sorry, Bisu feels comfortable enough that he's going to go for that Dragoon range. He's going to get some goons. And I think that'll be the end of uh, Stork's attack here. Stork, meanwhile, has his core up too. And uh, he's going to be a little bit slower on his tech though, like I said. Um, and he still has that scouting probe alive in his base, which is going to annoy him because he really, uh, you know, he, 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 he's, his hand's completely revealed here. Um, and looks like the scouting probe just leaving now. And he's getting a robotics facility, so this is really interesting from uh, Stork here. I think Stork knows that he is behind slightly because of that two gate zealots. He's committed himself to a lot more zealots that he wants to, so going for the robotics facility may just be a little more surprising. Um, he knows that Bisu has gone for, well I'm not sure if he knows that Bisu has gone for range because Bisu I think does go for robotics quite often. <laughs> but anyway, he, going for a faster robotics may just turn out better for him. Um, I think he does want to do something slightly more risky just so that he can gain advantage because you really do right. want to take the risk, take the initiative, and, you know, just affect something more successful than just catching up, playing catch-up. Yeah, pretty much you never want to play catch-up. Um, you really have to just, yeah, you have to win either by you know, out-expanding or out-teching. You just don't want to just follow, follow the leader, sort of, because you'll never get ahead that way in, uh, on this level of gaming. Um, but anyway, that is uh, pretty common sense there. Observatory going up for Stork. So Stork, without the scout, feels like he needs to go up OBS first. Um, and he's probably going to go for at least, uh, well, he's probably going to, he's definitely going to go for Reavers, I think. Uh, but he can prove me wrong, though. <laughs> um, here comes the Robotic Support Bay from Bisu. Bisu is fairly confident, um, I think maybe because he had a scouting probe longer, uh, alive longer, that uh, he's not going to be facing any DTs, so he doesn't need that observer. Um, he has range a significant amount of time earlier than Stork, but uh, he, perhaps he didn't know that. Um, he could have taken advantage of it, I think. Uh, he could have done some damage to Stork. Two probes saying hello to each other, but pretty, uh, you know, pretty standard game for both players now, actually, after that two gate. Um, and we'll see what Stork ends up doing here. This is Stork putting down his robotic support bay a little bit later. So Bisu's going to have the Reaper advantage for maybe a minute or so. And we'll see what he can do with it. Um, if he goes for that harass or if he goes for a frontal push. Either option is fine as long as he you know, takes advantage. He does something. And I'm sure he will uh, coming up pretty soon. Bisu is playing quite carefully though. He's placing, if you notice, he's placing all his pylons in a nice little perimeter around his base, just yeah. searching for that early detection for those shuttles. I'm not sure if Stork is doing the same. Maybe he's just not playing as carefully. Maybe I'm just Bisu biased. But anyway, Bisu is putting down <laughs> a third gateway. I think we can see some more dragoons, more beautiful dancing dragoons. And he might just choose to do a frontal push uh, along with a reaver. The reaver should be building soon, or it is already built, actually. Him. And Right, yeah, and yeah. Bisu is pushing out right now. Both forces, I think, are pushing out at the same time. It's interesting how these pro gamers have that timing down. Both, both have that game sense to know who's pushing out when. Well, I think also it's possible because Stork had the observer um, over the uh, over the reaver, and he realized he tr tried to intercept it. Maybe um, it looks like he's going to be forced back to his base, though. He sees the main army is uh, in there too, and uh, he could be in a lot of trouble here. Like I said, uh, Stork does not have reavers, but no, Stork actually has reavers. He has caught up, so um, he actually the timing wasn't as big oh, wow. of a window as I thought. No, Stork was superior micro. I gotta say at this point, he's killed a lot of dragoons. Both reavers still alive though, and it looks like Stork may have gotten a partial shot there. No, it looks like it hasn't hit the Reaver yet. And uh, I think Stork is barely... No, Stork does not come out ahead. I, I keep making these missed calls here, but it just looks like he's, he's ahead. Well, actually, it's so close, it's not going to matter. It's just one Dragoon alive for Bisu. He has reinforcements coming in, though, so he could still effect some more damage here. Um, Stork is, you know, going to have to reinforce pretty quickly here. He's going to get a second Reaver in his shuttle. And uh, the problem is, of course, he can't just go out with that shuttle alone. He needs at least uh, a couple of uh, dragoons to help him out, and uh, meanwhile, Bisu might be going for a probe harass behind his base because he knows he doesn't have uh, a lot of dragoons in his base, so he won't be in that much danger. He might kill a lot of probes of storks. We're gonna have to see right now. But there are dragoons ready to intercept, and those dragoons might take out that. No, they do not take out the shuttle, and that scarab travels halfway across the base to get no probes. Unfortunately, that scarab 
was very short-lived. <laughs> oh well. But Bisu and Stork are approximately, I think, even still. They came out pretty even. They traded armies, essentially. And Stork just was able to hold his ramp. Uh, that's also part of the problem with maps like Python. For It's just so hard to get up there to... Um, engage with Dragoons against Reavers when you have just that single Reaver holding your ramp. And it looks like Bisu is building a lot of Dragoons. He's just kind of dancing around them in the middle right now, just keeping his fingers, I guess, warm. Um, he may be sending them, he is sending them towards Stork right now, along with another shuttle uh, with two Reavers this time. He may be able to do some more harass or just try to push his way up into the center or into the front of his base again. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, you know, very mirror builds here, but actually we have seen um, uh, Bisu expand. In the first game, he managed to do a timing push. Uh, it did it perfectly when Stork had expanded and Bisu had not, and that's what gave him the game. But uh, here comes Bisu again with another Reaver Harass. Is he going to drop? He's going to drop both of them there. Looks like he can take down uh, the Dragoon there, and, and no, it looks like the probes run away in time, so uh, he's not going to commit. Um, it's very smart. He does not want to go in very deep with that shuttle. And Bisu, meanwhile, has picked up his expansion, so it's not like the first game on Longinus. Uh, he's getting his expansion not far behind Stork, and Stork again with a shield battery. Game 1, it didn't work out very well for him. Uh, we'll see how it does this time against an attack. He has inferior forces. Bisu going in right now. Uh, Bisu sending that Zella forward to absorb some hits. Stork definitely has an inferior army, but a better positioning, I feel. And uh, looks like Stork is going to... God, it's very close right now. Uh, I'm really not going to call it. Stork, I think, is going to come out ahead right now. As long as nothing disastrous occurs. No, Bisu comes out barely ahead, but Stork has the shield battery. Shield battery charges the Reaver. Oh, no! Stork loses both of his Reavers, though, with that last parting shot. And he's in huge trouble. And he, Bisu, once again, <laughs> owns me by playing so damn well. <laughs> Yeah, Bisu has just been doing so well. Every time he engages, he somehow, it, it looks so back and forth, he can barely tell who's going to come ahead, but somehow he just, I don't know, says some magic words and manages to do it. And right now he has those Reavers hovering around the base. He's, I think, scaring Stork a little. A part of this, uh, his advantage right now is the psychological advantage. He's the one doing the Reaver harassing. He's not letting Stork do the harassing. I don't think Stork has had the chance to exit his base yet. And Bisu is just bringing the battle to Stork's front line. He's scared into building a shield battery. I know it is careful defensive play, but still, I feel like the more aggressive player will have the advantage. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And uh, here comes the shuttle here with more Reavers here. Bisu going for the harass once again. He's got to get some probes this time. Oh, another Ooh. dot. And this time, he's going <laughs> to lose everything. Wow, he lost. I think he lost his uh, one Reaver, actually. No, the shuttle survives. Never mind. Uh, shuttle just basically dropped it off. And once again, he fails to get any probes, though. So, um, you know, he's scaring Stork, but I don't know how much damage he's doing. Uh, although it's got to be a little bit of damage every time because of the pulling and everything. Um... By the way, there's a great interview with both of these players who met for the first time outside of playing StarCraft just uh, like a week or two ago. I think the interview is on Team Liquid and SCForAll.com, but um, basically they haven't met each other and they just met each other in front of this mall in Seoul or something and they had this nice little talk with one another. It's kind of surprising how little the pro gamers, I mean, how, how little contact they have with each one of each other um, outside of their teams because uh, it's the first time they had ever met socially. And both of them have been in StarCraft for like two or three years. But, uh, you know, I guess that's uh, it's a hard life. But anyways, Stork going in there. He has to take out Bisu as fast as he can right now. He feels like, uh, oh, looks like he's actually going to come out ahead this time. Wow, great attack here from Stork. And Bisu could be in trouble if he loses that shot. He's going to lose that shot. No, he, great micro from Bisu getting a couple of extra shots off. But uh, Stork now comes ahead. He still has his Reaver alive. Is the Reaver going to stay alive? Reaver stays alive. So he could do a lot of damage to these probes with that Reaver there, but another Reaver coming from Bisu. Bisu gonna target Storks. Oh, Storks Reaver goes down, so he won't be able to do as nearly as much damage now, but he has reinforcements coming in. This game is getting very heated up at this point. Yeah, I think critically in that last battle, Stork lost his shuttle, so that Reaver, even though it could have, it had the potential to do so much damage, but it had to crawl. It had to crawl for about, like, three right. to five seconds just to get to those probes. So Stork, I, it, the game is still pretty even, I think. I, it's been really back and forth, first at Stork's base and now at Bisu's expansion. And Bisu, I think, did a pretty 
I mean, both players are doing pretty cool micro tricks. Both players did build that pylon out in front so that the scarab wouldn't be able to get past. I don't know how they oh, do yeah. it. I guess their 400 APM just lets them do that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> absolutely. And we're going to see a, a you know, transfer to late game tech here, at least from uh, BC, who's going to get his Citadel, and so has Storic. So uh, both of them are probably going to th start thinking about getting some high Templar and uh, some speed lots, and uh, maybe another base coming up pretty soon. Um, but of course, uh, in a mirror matchup, it, it really is about timing, and you have to be very careful. Uh, you know, Bisu cannot overexpand, neither can Stork. Stork has a slightly early expansion that could have accounted for uh, the slight unit advantage he had in the last battle, but it looks like um, Stork pulling back to kill on OBS, and uh, Bisu now pushing forward, and he has speed, I believe, for that shuttle there. So yeah, speed upgraded shuttle there. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting here. Uh, right now, they're calling this the uh, the Taebong era. Uh, Kim Tae, uh, Kim Tae Yong, I believe. Yeah, Kim Tae Yong is the name of uh, Bisu and Stork's nickname is Bong, so basically they're saying it's like the Bisu Stork era because these two players are on top of the world right now. And uh, you know, both of them have similar careers, by the way. Uh, they had uh, they were they were very good over a year ago, and then they had brief slumps, and now they're back. But anyway, here comes another harass from a uh, Bisuit, the Bisuit, but he once again does not get any probes. Um, sending a zealot there, actually, interesting enough. I guess he realized there was too many forces there for him to do anything. Both players are going to get mined out in their mains. Speed upgrade probably going out for both players' zealots. So um, I think the game is just too hot right now for either of them to expand. Uh, you know, I think whoever takes the expansion is going to be in a little trouble uh, because the other player is going to counterattack really quickly. Stork does look like he has an amazing Dragoon advantage right now, and yeah. he still might be in trouble. He's going to lose this Reaver. Where was that shuttle, <laughs> really? And those Dragoons will have to retreat all the way back to Bisu's base before some Zealots, some hero Zealots. No, the Zealots are going to turn tail and run with those Dragoons. No, I'm sorry. they're not Reaver <laughs> Zealots. <laughs> they're Bisu Zealots, man. I mean, <laughs> Bisu Zealots are no man lots, okay? Uh, they they right, have nice I... hair. That's what I'll give them. But uh, anyway... <laughs> Nice hair and nice eyes and nice micro, I have to say. But it looks like, I think Stork may be looking for expansion in the top left. This may be a mistake, I don't know how much... He does have a great Dragoon advantage right now, but if he does take an expansion, Bisu can push um, his uh, another advantage, a military advantage. But both armies are trying to engage right now, and those Zealots are just ganging up on that Dragoon, and so many Dragoons are dying. Those Reavers aren't exactly... I'm not even sure what's happening right now. <laughs> dragoon blood everywhere, and those Reavers Giant are battle. going to go down by Stork. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Stork's... One of Stork's Reavers goes down. Both of Bisu's still up, but I don't see a shuttle around anymore. I think the shuttle got targeted. I uh, don't know who's going to come out ahead. This is going to be really close. I think Stork's going to come out ahead slightly. Uh, nope. I miscalled it again. <laughs> I was going to say because of the Reaver. But it, I think actually it's fine for him because uh, there's only four Dragoons left. Um, the Reaver and the shuttle are still alive, and there is a shield battery to uh, help it. But uh, yeah, you know, very close battle. I don't think Bisu knows about the expansion at the upper left. He would probably be sending units over there and we'll see if he decides to take an expansion during uh, this lull when he has a slight advantage a temporary advantage basically you want to expand when you're attacking that's a general rule of starcraft it's the best time and oh looks like there was no expansion at the upper left wow both of us got duped there um bisu just uh, either he canceled it or he might have canceled it i don't know or he didn't build anything to start with i mean sorry stork stork canceled it uh getting the names mixed up a little bit but um, yeah, Stork <laughs> right. looks like neither player has expanded, basically, is the point. And they're both running off one base. And this might be dangerous because both players are getting mined out in their main. They probably will need to expand. I'm really surprised by how little they have expanded. Usually Protosses expand all over the place, especially with these new macro-style Protoss players. But I guess it is different yeah. in mirror builds. You really can't take that much of a risk and expand when your opponent isn't going to expand. Um, but yeah, right now, I think Bisu is trying to go in with another Reaver harass. He hasn't been very successful with these harasses, unfortunately, for him. But right now, both players, I guess, are just posturing. They are trying to rebuild their armies. They've traded armies quite a few times, and now they're just going to dance around <laughs> with their Dragoons and Zealots. I think they will meet in the middle, maybe, right now. We'll have to see who has the positioning advantage. A lot of what happens is in these 
army uh, engagements, they need that good curvature, they need that uh, reaver placement right behind the dragoons so that they won't right. be in range but they can still shoot. Yeah, I mean, I don't know who's better at that. Both players are really good. It's gonna come down a little bit to luck, and I think neither has, <laughs> I think neither has expanded yet. Yeah, both of them just have probes waiting in the corners, just itching for an expansion. But they know they can, I guess, while um, they don't have a, mir a military advantage because the 400 minerals they sink into it could make the difference in the next battle. Just that small amount could still make a, a big difference, and that could be the difference between life and death. Um, and uh, here comes Bisu moving north again, still just posturing in the middle. Neither wants to give up the middle, of course. Um, because that would make it impossible for them to expand. And Bisu now trying to catch Stork off guard. No, Stork is Stork is just great at keeping his army together this entire game. I mean, that's really important. Also fending off the Reaver Harass. He seems to have a, a lot of pr uh, observers around. He's been just seeing each of these Reaver Harasses come in. I think that's partially why he's defended so well. In any case, um, looks like uh, we're going to see a retreat here from Bisu. But uh, he's got another Reaver thinking about harassing the upper left. There's going to be nothing there, though. No, he's going to go back to the natural expansion. And this time, I think Stork does not know it's coming. And he could be in huge trouble this time. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> but that Citadel placement is key. That Those Reavers were not able <laughs> yeah. to get any scarabs off. Bisu is just out of luck with Reaver, dumb Reaver AI. I hate Reavers, I have to say. Reavers, although they are used... Oh, and oh, so many people oh, go my down. God. <laughs> <laughs> so many probes go down, and finally Bisu does get a nice probe harass off, although he does take off this probe that was just wishing, itching to build that nexus, but now it never will. In the meantime, I think both oh. players are still posturing in the center. Uh, Bisu is retreating a little bit. I'm wondering why. Maybe, maybe Stork is actually tricked into thinking that Bisu has an expansion there? I, I don't know why Stork is going so close to that 8 o'clock position. Maybe... Uh, I'm not sure, but both Chasing players do shuttle, have observer. <laughs> oh, perhaps. Um, but both players have been pretty good about having observers all over the place. I think I've seen observers chasing observers, observers chasing shuttles, observers all over the place, and they have just been able to posture so well in that center of the map. They're just dancing around each other, moving forward when the other player moves forward. Both players are just kind of hesitant to attack each other, to engage, I think both players know that the next battle may be the decisive battle and neither one wants to really lose that battle, obviously. Money is on the line and fame and women and so on. Revenge. Yeah, and wow, look at this. Stork <laughs> is distance mining. Um, this really reminds me a lot of that last game they played, uh, the epic game on Chipung Ryung they played, and that was epic by, any, by all means, just because, uh, you know, you reminded of that saying from Albert Einstein, uh, you know, I, I do not know what weapons will be used in uh, the next world war, but I know which ones will be used afterwards. There'll be sticks and stones. And it's kind of like that. Like, they both lost their armies, and they had no economy left, and they just used basically just a few dragoons to sign it. We'll see if that happens again this game. Looks like the gigantic, huge Armageddon battle is occurring now. Uh, shuttle, one Reaver down for Stork. Two Reavers still out for Bisu. He has the more re I think, oh, wow, three. Three Reavers for Bisu. I think Bisu is going to take this battle here. Stork is just does not have enough force, and those Reavers are doing so much damage. But he actually has a southern flank, so maybe if he can keep those speed lots alive. But no, no, no. It looks like Bisu is going to take this battle decisively at this point. And uh, I, I think it was just the superior number of Reavers that he had. Stork with just two speed lots left. I don't know what he's thinking about doing them, but there's not much he can do, and I don't think. I don't think Stork can replace this army at this point. I, I don't know what he has left in the tank, but um, and it looks like Bisu has an expansion up. Stork has not had the minerals to get that expansion up, and I think this game is pretty much over now for uh, for for Stork. Yeah, I think what happened that last battle, part of the th uh, reason why Bisu came out on top, I think, is because he kind of tricked Stork into attacking his base, and then had a better positioning. He was able right. to catch him on a much wider front. He has a really nice curvature actually. And Bisu is pushing for the kill maybe with those zealots and the, those reavers in that shuttle. Meanwhile, Stork is still distance mining and Bisu has the expansion already established. So Bisu is firmly in the lead, I think. He's going to get an economic advantage very soon and he can turn that into a military advantage, a decisive military advantage if he already doesn't have one. 
Yeah, it's going to take an epic uh, series of mistakes for um, Beast to lose this one at this point. Uh, although it's very possible, you know, losing a shuttle could be enough. But no, it looks like Beast is going to, oh, catch a lot of these probes and also basically just force Stork into the upper left where his army is going to get corralled and destroyed. Not much to say at this point. There's so many speed lots there. And I also think... Uh, just the extra reavers, also slightly better um, speed lot positioning for us. Uh, Bisu also really helped in the last battle. Anyway, though, all these probes gonna get massacred. There is some Wally probe massacre there. Uh, you know, end of the world. Wally. Just a bunch of robots left. Wally, Wally. Uh, yeah, that was a good Wally. movie, by the way. Um, <laughs> did you watch that movie, Wally? I it's did. I kid. really loved it, especially Eva. Eva. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's what I think about when I think about probes, um, except when they're killing my drones, because that happens sometimes. Yeah. They just get in your drone line and start killing them. But <laughs> anyway, the game is pretty much over at this point. Looks like Bisu is going to get a little bit of revenge for the, um, the OSL where, uh, Bisu, where Stork knocked him out, and uh, this time he'll be the win, winning the uh, first prize here. Um, you know, I, I don't know historically who's done better against whom. I know, of course, Bisu won the uh, second MSL champion. He had the GOM TV 2 MSL against Stork, of course, in the finals. But anyway, GG coming from uh, Stork, and Bisu is going to win this best of three and the IEF finals. So congratulations to Bisu Shield. Um, you know, I think you're, you're going to be very happy about this, right? <laughs> I am ecstatic, and you know, in my heart of hearts, I knew Bisu would win. It was just something about him. Bisu, Bisu just wins things, I think. Well, he does do that recently. I mean, right now, he is arguably the best player in StarCraft right now. And, uh, you know, there's not much, um, you know, in the rest of the programming world to really uh, to shake him that much. You know, Jadong and Flash are in little mini slumps and Stork has been a little bit uh you know away from keyboard I guess since the uh since his OSL final so you know arguably your man Bisu is the best player right now uh of course I have many things to say about his his hairstyle and his lack of manliness but I think I'll save them for a commentary where you're not around to uh dispute me on them right <laughs> all right thanks for that consideration <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, so by the way, do check out Hazelnut, um, Hazely Nut, or just Hazel, I guess. Uh, her her YouTube screen name is Hazel Y Nut, so Hazely Nut, <laughs> and I have a promotion video, so you can find the link there too. Um, she has really just taken off, it's a meteoric launch, um, I think she's gone from five viewers to over 500 subscribers in 24 hours or something, two days, pretty much, right? Right, something around that. I think I might be over the 500 mark, yay! <laughs> and hopefully I'll just continue to get viewership. Um, I'm really, I really appreciate everyone's viewership, especially all the comments people have been leaving because they really do yeah. help. You never really realize what kind of speaking habits you have, like ums all the time and so on. Yeah, I think you've been doing great with uh, improving just through these uh, dual commentaries. I've noticed you've really cut down on the ums and uh, I, I think... I mean, I do it all the time, to be honest. I do uhs and, and random things. Sometimes I just make little sounds. But, uh, you know, <laughs> it's it's part of commentating. Don't don't let the haters drag you down either. Although I'm sure there's not many because you're doing a great job. Anyway, um, thank you for coming along with this duel. Thank you, uh, audience, for listening. And uh, have a good evening.